29 seconds. I already hate this video. This is making a promise on behalf of God that God himself has not made. You don't take the Bible and twist the living daylights out of it. Who is the multitude? What is the multitude? This is one of our most disjointed episodes ever. Yeah. Can we just be done? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hit, Hit the, the bar. bar. I'm Steve Kozar. Paulette Kozar and... <laughs> Lucy goes there. Okay. So she's having this problem the past, I don't know how many times. She doesn't want to do this anymore. She doesn't. As soon as she gets in my lap, this head goes right down there. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, except to think that she, she's um, fed up. She is truly the heresy hound. She knows what's about to happen. <laughs> she, she doesn't want to be a part of she it. She doesn't want to be a part of it. Hey, I mean, welcome, everybody. Welcome. So we're in the living room for the second time, and I changed speakers. <laughs> Thank you for all 90 million people who told me the sound wasn't that good last time. Explain. My head was in the way of the speaker, and actually the sound from the original videos we used was a little muffled in places, yeah. too. So I took another speaker that's more mid range and it's right here. Hopefully it's better. And if it's, if it's not better, please don't tell me. I have enough trouble in my life. And I hear about it, so then I suffer. <laughs> okay, so speaking of trouble in our life. There she is. We're she gonna... won't stay. I'm going to try really hard to keep her here. Look at her. There she goes. She goes. Sorry. No. She does not want to be in my lap. We it's are so really sorry weird. for you Lucy fans. You know what? We will bring we're, her. We're in a new phase right now with, with her. her. <laughs> we just need to kind of see where things are going. I'll bring her back at the end so she can howl for all of us. We're going we're to talk about Priscilla Shire. And I've not seen her, but I've heard all about her because of you. Really? I have not heard. Well, I mean, no. mean just, just as of today or in the past? In the past. Yeah, she, I mean, the only time I've heard about her was because you told me about her. I've like, not heard from she's her. She's like Beth Moore. Her. She has three volumes. Loud, very loud, and even louder yet. I mean, seriously, we go to a church where we don't follow these people. No, no. And it's been about seven years. So It's been at least seven years. More like so, eight now, I think. So I don't go to women's... I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Always. So... <laughs> We, I don't go to women's things and listen yeah. to the latest whatever. So, And I'm working all day and I come home and I don't go online okay. to watch all these crazy people. Okay. I, w I let him do that. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so I'm going to play you a 12-minute video that was... I'm scared. It was uh, an excerpt of a video from Priscilla Shire. <clears throat> and it's actually on TBN. And she's speaking at the gigantic um, church, the Joel Osteen Lakewood Church. You can so, see. So who is she the daughter of? She's the daughter of um, Tony Evans. You Tony said. Evans. I've and heard of him. And she has I've a seen she him. has a background in motivational speaking. And you said theological. She, she did go to Dallas Theological Seminary. So uh, in my mind, it's like, oh, she went through seminary. Of course, what she's going to say is really going to be good. I'm just saying that's what that's goes through my mind that, until I probably hear. Her. <laughs> you would say that right now. Before I listen to her. Yeah. You I know, mean, there'd be some a, kind of. This is a mixed issue. Uh, some people say you don't need a seminary. You don't need a seminary's bad. All seminaries are bad, or you know. And then other people are like, oh, seminary proves that you're legit, right? And you can go to seminary and decide you don't want to do the stuff that was taught to you, mm -hmm. or go you to a seminary the, that's not legit. There's plenty of seminaries that teach things that, that used to be legitimate, yeah. but then went downhill, and it's right. like <clears throat> we all don't know that they don't really teach but correctly. In, in the overall scope of things, yes. A really good, well-trained, seminary-trained pastor is a wonderful thing, and that's what we've been blessed with. Yes, Our pastor we have. Has, has got um, you know, knowledge of Greek and Hebrew, mm -hmm. and he's answered our questions better than any pastor we've ever had. That's correct. And that's because of his training in seminary. Right. So and that's very good. It's very good. So I don't want to say uh, anything about her having a seminary degree that's good or bad in, in this situation. Okay. I, I don't know what she would say about it. Maybe she says, oh, that was good, but you know, I don't really use that stuff anymore. Right. But I'm going to play the very beginning because I want you to hear the the key points that TBN. <laughs> the loud, louder and loudest. Yeah, the, there's I'm no afraid. there's no gaps in this thing. No. It's just boom, boom, boom. Oh, here we go. Even though everything we do in our videos is totally protected by the fair use laws, I still got copyright strikes for this video multiple times. So I went back and re-edited it and changed a bunch of the audio and the video so that we wouldn't get copyright strikes. So it looks a little weird. You don't need more. You just need God's blessing on what you've already got. You don't need more. You just need God's blessing on your five and two, girl. That's all you need. You know what his blessing is? 
passing is. What's the five and two? Well, I want to read it. It's the passage about the loaves and the fishes. Okay. It's his favor. Y'all, favor is what makes the scales balance over in your favor. Favor is what makes things a little bit unfair on your behalf. Favor is what opens doors that nobody can shut. Too bad no one told that to Paul. Yeah. Or Peter. Or well, Jesus. What is she appealing to right now? Our uh, sinful flesh. nature, our Absolutely. flesh. Absolutely. We want 100%, it all our way. 100%. Hey, you, uh-huh. you want stuff in life. God okay. wants to give it to you, and I'm here to give you the magic formula. 29 seconds. 29 seconds. I already hate this video. <laughs> and I'm about... Okay. Okay. No wonder why Lucy left. She just yeah. felt... She felt the energy. She did feel the energy, and it's bad. Favor is what puts you in positions that nobody can take away. Favor is what sets you before kings and queens. Oh, boy. Favor of God is what you want on your life. The favor of God is what you want on your life. This is uh, completely self-centered, man-centered, selfish teaching. So that let's you can... look in the New Testament. Where does it even explain that in this respect? I mean, in the, in this whole framework, Scripture talks about okay, if you to are live, if, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Yes, but He's also saying if you yeah. are brought before authorities and you're being condemned for your belief, don't worry about what you're going to say yeah. because Rejoice the Holy that you have been persecuted for the, for the sake of the Christ. And the Holy Spirit will give you the words that you need to have at that time to, you know, um, defend what you believe and defend the gospel. Well, I mean, that's about persecution. Yes, and that's not what she's going to talk about. But, but that's the whole test. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I'll listen. I'm going to read the story from Good. Matthew. And this story is, is, I'm looking at the screen like, that's the camera. There's the camera. Hi, everybody. <laughs> all of our campuses. I just got really close to the microphone. We right didn't there. say hi to all of our campuses. Hi to all of our campuses. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, now, uh, this is Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 13. Now, right. when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Five and two. Five and two, okay. girl. <laughs> then he ordered... And by the way, this story is not a descriptive, this is a descriptive passage. It's not a prescriptive passage. And pack. what does that mean? A descriptive passage is describing. What's going on. What's going on. Right. It's not saying this is the thing that will keep going on for all of human history. You all can Christians claim the will, five and two and yeah, you're going to be yeah. winning. It's a great story. In fact, this is one of the few parables, or not parables, the stories yeah. that's recorded in all four Gospels. And I have all four of them open here. I, I, I'm thinking about reading them, but let me just get through this first one. Okay. Uh, and he said, bring them here to me. Basically, bring me the tiny bit of food that you have. Sure. The five and two. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. So there is some kind of ideas you can get from the story as far as maybe what was going on and what it looked like and how it felt. But there really isn't that much information. Time out. (laughs) I keep going into my radio voice that I've had since like fourth grade. (laughs) I know. And I've remembered it since fourth grade. So... You have a question there in the audience. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the show today. How can I help you, sweetheart? I can't encourage this, but I can't yeah. help it. So it's not giving the story about the little boy who gave up his lunch. Because oh, yeah. that's where it came from. Um, okay. That's excellent. Yeah. When I was growing up, that's all I heard about was the little, the little child. You gotta need to be like that little child. <laughs> right. You gotta give up all you have. Just give what you got. That's all and you need to do. And sometimes we're silly. I'm sorry, but we just are. And we're not... Don't apologize. They no. know who we are. They can deal with it. <laughs> Jesus feeds the 5,000 from the book of Luke. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. 
Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. So the, the disciples were just being very, very practical. Very practical. There's nothing wrong with what they said. No, they we were, don't have anything to give them. They're yeah, all going to be hungry. There's a lot hungry. of them. So he answered, you give them something to eat. That's a very brief <laughs> sentence. He, he, we have no indication as to... His, they're his, they're his, in the middle of nowhere, and yeah. Jesus looks at the disciples and says, fine, you figure it out. Well, he says, you give them something to eat. And he knows they don't have food. That's right. why they're saying, we got to send them to the village. Okay. They answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Unless we go and buy food for all this crowd, about 5,000 men were there. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. The disciples did so, and everyone sat down. <clears throat> Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. So was it the little boy who gave them the stuff? Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken piece that were left over. There's no boy yet. I think there's two stories of multiplying food. I don't know. This is the only one I know of. And I'm not prepared because he didn't tell me what we were going to do. So I didn't go through the Bible to... I'm making excuses because... Yeah, you are. Those are some great excuses. <laughs> and we've decided that from going you know, now on... Don't I'm, tell him what our plans are for the future. We probably will change them. Okay. Um, I'll be more prepared. That would be good. Yeah. Well, I'd be, pre I'd be prepared Why if you, you know me what I'm doing. I think they... <laughs> what you're doing, you should share that with me. What am I doing? Now you're going to look up another scripture verse. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, John. John chapter 6. I didn't have that one ready. Sorry. Thanks for your patience, everybody at home. Don't worry. It's going to get really fast-paced in a minute when we turn this lady on. <laughs> and loud. <laughs> it's going to get fast and loud. Okay, 6 chapter 1. And furious. 6 chapter 1. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. <clears throat> Uh, Jesus, I, I'm getting over a cold, by the way. <laughs> Why is that funny? Because you, you sit on the sick. <clears throat> uh, the signs that he was doing on the sick. Mm. <laughs> oh. You were like spot on. <laughs> that was all impromptu. I was very impressive. Yeah. Even when I don't know what I'm doing. You know what you're know doing. What yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who there has five barley loaves and yes. two fish, but what, what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, which actually I've seen pictures of that part of the world, and there's not a lot of grass normally. Hmm. So I thought we turned our phones That's off. That's your phone, not mine. I thought I turned my phone off. Nope. My phone's fine. Huh. Turned off all notifications. This is professional video making right here, people. We're going to make tutorials. <laughs> okay. See, it's that authentic thing. <laughs> Just keep going. Okay, so... Um, there's a boy here. Yeah, uh, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So, that yeah, one I remember. Yeah, each of these stories has got a little different angle to it. And this is one of those things where um, there's a number of stories in the New Testament that are repeated and they have different details. But if you look at them, doesn't mean they're completely fabricated stories and, you know, it's just people they're making stuff. They're minor details. They're, they're minor details. It's the, the, the theme or the 
the gist of it's the same. Right. Um, in fact, uh, Modern Reformation Magazine did a whole series of articles about the Book of John. And they had some really good... By the way, Modern Reformation Magazine, if you're interested in subscribing to something, really scholarly, really good. I recommend it. I didn't really finish my thought there. In Modern Reformation Magazine, they had an interview with the author of this book, Lydia McGrew. And it touched on that whole topic of the stories in the Bible when they seem to have differences in details. It actually helps enhance their authenticity. That's what I was supposed to say. I did write an article for them once. He did, and it was published. Yeah. It was but pretty But I can't cool. share it because it's a you have to subscribe. You can't um, access the website. Anyway. We need to subscribe. No, I am subscribed. I'm saying I can't share it to the with the public because oh, they can't read it I without see. having a code or whatever. Sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to brag about my one article. You didn't brag. <laughs> it's just one. And I'm surprised they even let me do that much. Okay, so here's uh, here's what we want to do now. We want to hear her. And, and now we haven't heard this whole sermon, and I don't know where it is. I think it's only on TBN. I and, don't know. And I don't have a subscription, believe it or not. I don't have the cable or whatever it is to get TBN. But just listen to what she turns this into. I came to tell somebody who's got a multitude pressing on you. In- so she's referring to the multitudes. Of the people who are hungry because they were following Jesus. So now she's turning that, that multitude into... What's your multitude? What's the multitude pressing on you in your life? The oppression. Well, that's... Or pressing on you. I don't know what she's... What she does here is really weird. Okay. Your marriage or in your finances or in your health or in your parenting or in your singleness. Okay, so the thing that's pressing on you could be any of those things. Right. Not the tens of thousands of people that you need to feed that Jesus said to the disciples you need to feed. Yeah, so... Okay. And and his point is just to show his divine nature. Yes. And that... The whole, all the miracles are for us to marvel and to be absolutely convinced that this was a man like no other man. This, right. is, this is actually God in the flesh. Right. And that's what had, it's about. That's what it's about. He it's has the power, about us. He has the power to forgive sins. It doesn't mean that uh, we become Jesus in our own lives, and I don't know anybody who ever has. But amazingly, that's the way this is often taught. But you know what's you know what's so we're, we're kind of encouraging okay. about no about how she's actually framing this is she's mentioning right away things that people do struggle with, and so she grabs us and pulls us in. It's like yeah, I've got that problem, and then she'll bring in scripture and explain. I'm thinking that just as Jesus fed. <clears throat> thousands of people I'm hoping I don't know the way she's just twisting it so far it's probably not even going to be logically what I'm going it, to say it, it, if you this is one of the things I always tell you if you've watched our videos you've heard me say this these speakers have to use emotion they have to be dramatic and she's so over the top yeah I don't even have to mention it you'll see it but if you just listen to what they say <clears throat> you know sentence by sentence even if you have to half a sentence at a time and you think about, well, wait a minute, she just said that, but right. now she's saying this, but that can't be How right. How can it correlate? Yeah, it, it, words really need to mean something. Yes. So so I'm just saying how she's bringing or drawing us in emotionally. Right, you're is right. Is she's identifying with mm-hmm. us where we're all at well, in some sp- place in our life. This is what they all do. It could be your finances. It could be your children. Marriage. It could be your marriage. All the problems that everybody has in Everybody, common. every day. Yeah. That thing is weighing down on Always. you. That means that there is a drawer waiting to be opened. <laughs> so whatever bad thing you've got your in your life. Your dresser drawer. It's in your dresser drawer. Just open it. She must have used an illustration earlier. Yeah, must have. We didn't know what that was. I'm sorry. I knocked the table. That's okay. So um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. That didn't take long. We got to open a drawer. Yeah, that's what it was. Just keep going. Yeah. You know what? We need to just yeah. listen. Here we go. That's what you call a gigantic leap. We're only a minute in. <laughs> it's a, it, she didn't. She didn't prove the point. She just made it. She asserted this. This is an assertion. Normally, in any kind of an argument, any kind of a sermon, you might make an assertion. That's fine. You know, I, I, I make the assertion that God loves mankind. Well, now I need to prove that. You can't just say it. You need to prove it. And okay. obviously, you, you would use scripture to do that. That's not what happens. You, you make your point in these cases with pure emotion and storytelling and drama. And when you take it out, finally, when you stop ignoring it, when you... Sp- By the way, this is a women's conference, if you didn't notice. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry. She keeps doing that in there. <coughs> Five and two. Five and two. That's all I'm. I, I'm. That's all I am. Like signaling to is what she's doing. That's, five, please believe that. Five and two. Five and, <laughs> no, five and two, honey. Okay. Huh? Stop circumventing it. When you stop acting like God hasn't given you everything you need, when you will finally recognize this little bit, this little gifting, this little talent, this little time, this little money, this little dream, this little vision, that this is all I need if I'll just pull it out. <laughs> Do you follow the leap that she just took? You have all these things oppressing you, like the people in the in the crowd who needed to be fed. And, now she's and all you needed was five loaves and two fishes. And now she's saying, "You got five loaves and two fish. Pull it out." Pull, well, but, but <laughs> now she's talking about but now, she's, now she's talking about your dreams, right? And your talent. And you have everything God's already given you. Just do something with it. It's just like the five okay, loaves so, and two fishes. So, I so think, just just. Anything bad that's going on in your life is proof that you've got some great thing right around the corner. Gosh, we've never heard that before, ever. except every sermon review we've ever done. Completely. And really and the, and the key is to take your little dream and and five and, and two. <laughs> Come here, honey. <laughs> Whenever we're unclear about anything from now on, we're just gonna say five and two. And everybody, okay. you'll know what we're you'll talking know. about. See, she was sniffing around, acting like she's got no place to go. So. Welcome back to the show, Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. Five and two, Lucy. Five and, Five and two. two. Five and two. And entrust it to the hands of a multiplying master. So your dream is the thing that will get you out of the the, the crowd. Situation. It's already ordained. Whatever the dream is. Well, yeah. It's because God planted it there. We've learned no that in all these other... No matter what. Yeah. I'm dreaming of, like I said... I want to be Santa Claus. I want to, I want to be an NBA basketball <laughs> That's star. That's right, and you'll be one. You know, Milwaukee's Five only, and two. A, it's only an hour and a half away. Hey, fear the deer. This is the time... Fear This is the, the time deer. to jump on board. <laughs> yes. I'm six foot tall. I played basketball back in high shrunk, school. I honey. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> Can I just show you real quick what the disciples did? Okay. Just real quick, because I think it's interesting because it's so us. Oh, I hate this. They said to Jesus in verse 12, send the multitude away. Does she love the adoration of a crowd or what? Yes. This is so embarrassing for her. It's just so clear that this is a... A woman who's just so in love with herself and her audience and okay. being the center of attention. So what she just said as a woman. She's trying to draw meaning from something that's not there. Can I finish? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because now I've totally turned off my critical thinking. Uh-huh. I'm engaged with her and her personality. And you're right. I'm already identifying with her and saying, yeah, I tell him to, I tell him to go away too because I've got nothing for him because I want to fix it. So... In the past, I would have looked at it that way, and I would have, she would have been very endearing to me, and I would have been A there. A Woman's Perspective with Paulette Kozar. I'm done. Uh, no, that was good. I, I'm, I'm, seriously, I, I appreciate that, because I don't get this. I really, it, it just irritates me. And I get way. it. Yeah, I, and I'm glad that you're saying that, because it helps me to not be quite Good. as irritated. I'm very glad. Because Although it, it's only helped a tiny bit, to be honest. Let's keep going. That's so us. See, we don't just say it. We pray it. I get that. I mean, she's totally connecting to the women who are overwhelmed with their lives. We don't say it. We, we don't just say it. We pray it. <clears throat> I'm going to see what... I don't know what she Jerry, means. Uh, oh, Lord. They don't know what they're about. (laughs) I want to see it. (laughs) We pray away what we don't even recognize is the gift he has given us. This is 12 minutes and we're only in two, not even a half minutes. So the five and two represents your dreams. That's not in the passage anywhere. Okay, it's okay, Lucy. But that's what she's turned this into, right? I'm, I'm, I'm reading this correctly. I don't know. Let's keep going. To press us into opening up our drawer. So if you pray for your multitude to be taken away and in God's... Wait, do we have to open up the drawer or does the drawer get opened up? Or where the... Does the mul- who is the multitude? <sighs> what is the multitude? This is... Is it people? Is it our dreams? Is it the money that we need? Well, is you it can apply it however you want. It's just money. 
has left it in your life. That means there's a drawer. There's a drawer. Stop, start looking. Okay, where did she get the drawer from? I mean, really, we, we, were ta we were listening from the beginning, and I didn't... No, but remember, this is an excerpt of a larger speech. This is what TBN put on as an excerpt. So we should have actually gone to the larger no, speech. No, I just said I couldn't find it because it's on TBN. <laughs> remember, it's right, in the video that we're in the middle of making right now? For a drawer. If there's a multitude, that means there's loaves and fish. Some this drawer thing is driving life. me nuts. So this is, this is making a promise on behalf of God that God himself has not made. This is the key point that I want you to get from this. This okay. is what all these people do. They take a passage that's pointing to the divinity of Christ, and they turn it into a passage that's supposed to be a prescription for how you can live your life. Okay. And everything becomes a symbol for something in your life. And it's not because the Bible says that. The Bible doesn't say that at all. It's because she said it. And maybe she's copying this from somebody else. That's quite possible. They all do that. She's already hiding again. Also, this comes from the idea, I, I want to hide too, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a dog, so I gotta keep doing this show for the people, for you, the people. Um, the um, I lost my train of thought again. Sorry. This is this is one of our most disjointed episodes ever. Yeah. Let's keep going. That is supposed to be entrusted into the hands of God. So we pray away. Did you realize in verse 12 they are wishing away what in verse 11 Jesus welcomed? No, all they said was, "Where are we gonna do? We gotta yeah. send them away." Yeah. It was just an answer to yes. Jesus statement that's all it was and if you and we're blowing it out of proportion if you here. were to read anything and this would be the one thing you could read into it is that the disciples constantly were guilty of not having enough faith in christ or even recognizing right. who was christ if they had they had difficulty with doubt you know what that's how all human beings all christians right. live so that's the one point you could draw, but yeah. she's turning it into this very specific thing about how you've got these things oppressing you and your dream destiny thingy. It's got to get pulled mm. out of the drawer. And the thing that Whatever really the is. I noticed in the very beginning in those little excerpts, she said how you don't have to do anything. It's already been done or something like yes. that. Yes. Well, now she's going to talk about all the stuff you got to do. There she you, goes. you got to do these things. Bye, Lucy. <laughs> we'll see you a little bit later. She's right there on the floor. She just wants to get away. Jesus welcomed what they're wishing away. So the disciples say, Get, get this multitude away. Okay, I got an idea. So, this is when we look at scripture, not... Good thing we got the timer here, huh? <laughs> got to turn it on again. <laughs> this will be one of our four-hour episodes. <laughs> I think my Barney Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well... Go ahead, Ange, you tell him. The minute I seen him close up, I knew this was a bigger game. <laughs> so... Okay, I'm sorry, I was did I, did yes, I, you I, did. I'm sorry. This is bad. You want me to back it up a second? Maybe okay. that'll help. They don't even know they're praying away their miracle. They're not. Everybody wants to see the Red Sea divide, but nobody wants to. Okay. Be the one that comes okay. To okay. I think I went. Stop for, it for I a didn't, second. I didn't go backward. I went forward. Doesn't matter. <laughs> the point she's doing and how she's how she is doing it. Yeah. She's unpacking it like a <clears throat> Western 21st century individual. Mm -hmm. Opposed to context. Living in the Dallas suburbs. By the way, I know that this conference that she's a guest speaker at is in Houston, but her actual ministry is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Context. Upper middle class. Context. Right. right. Where have we heard that before? Chris Roseboro. Love you, Thank Chris. Thank you. My name is Chris Roseboro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the actual word of God. So we're not looking at scripture in light of scripture right. and having scripture explain scripture so we nope. understand what God is truly trying to reveal to us. We're taking it in our modern day, in our first world, right? Not second or third, we're the first world mm -hmm. context. Yeah. And we're seeing how it applies to us. We can do that with any scripture. If you don't have the parameters around scripture of how to correctly interpret it, you can take anything and make it sound really good for any purpose in your life, anything you want in your life, anything you want to describe or explain away in your life. And I, I'm right, aren't I? I mean, you, there's, I mean, you can do that. You can do that with not only scripture, but you can do that with any book in the world. Jesus said, "Have the people sit down." <laughs> Well, if you really meant sit down. What's the, what do you have what's in your the, life? That what's the to, down in your life? 
What is it that Jesus needs to sit down with you about? What is the thing that right. you, you can do that with? You can just Anything. take one sentence and any book. It doesn't have to be the Bible. No, it doesn't have to be the Bible. Any book, but because we revere the Bible and we're all Christians, we take the Bible and we use it. You could take Tom Sawyer. You, you know, know, what's the fence in your of, life that you have to whitewash? Speaking of Tom Sawyer, I was thinking about <laughs> it was one of those books we read when we were kids, either Huckleberry Finn or Tom Sawyer, where Mark Twain was kind of making fun of the Southerners in their 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 kind of um, oh, what would you call it? Their view of the Bible was very. It was like a um, a, a, a charm. A good luck charm. Okay. Where they would like lay a Bible over somebody because they thought it had special powers. Really? Yeah. I, I, it's been so many years, but I do remember that. And this is kind of what she's doing where you just see the Bible is this thing you can do whatever you want with. And it's just got these magical powers that you can just... Kind Silly of, putty. Yeah. You bend Silly it and shape Jesus. it however you want. Silly putty Bible. The um, the thing that I want to also make clear is that I am, like I said earlier, very much in favor of a well-trained pastor. And the, the difference, a well-trained pastor knows how to pull the meaning out of the scripture, exegesis. He doesn't insert what he thinks it might mean for us today. And then manipulate it. And then manipulate it, which is exactly what she's doing. So a well-trained pastor isn't good at storytelling, although they might do that a little bit here and there. It doesn't really, matter. It's about them taking the meaning of the scripture because it's the word of God yes. and making that meaning clear to us. And it will apply to us. We don't have to try to insert our own modern day stuff to make it apply. That's and really real when mistake. you look at it, what's the most important thing that scripture does for us? It points us to Jesus and it points to our salvation right? and the forgiveness of sins. Right. If it's, that if, is it, period. Period. If it's, if it's not pointing to that every time, there's something wrong. Right. Um, yeah, the she's, son of God came born of a Virgin Mary, died a cruel and death that we should have had. Punishment died in for our, our place. Right, for our sins. And then rose again. And rose again. And that's what we have all of our hope in. It's in right. what he did for us. Our hope is not in ourselves and our own abilities. And what we can do and, and the our loaves dreams. and the fish and yeah. everything else. I'm not against having dreams and goals. No, that's fine. But We've talked about that yeah, before. Yeah, but that's not what Christianity is all about. No, that's not real life. And there are Christians throughout all of history, including many in the world today, who they're barely s- scraping by and they're in danger of being martyred. And they are being martyred. Yes. So this message doesn't apply to many Christians in the world today. And that's very frustrating. It's sickening, really. It is sickening. That this is what America is exporting to the rest of the world as if we're so great. Uh, we're and not if, great. And if in that the sense. people, you know, in Haiti just believed her, yeah. you know, or whatever country you know and the Dominican Africa Republic has been devastated it's like a swarm of locusts that has gone across that continent over the past 100 years I mean word of faith teaching like this okay praying away their miracle everybody wants to see the Red Sea divide but nobody wants to be the one that comes face to face with a Red Sea you don't come face to face with the Red Sea that happened one time yeah and <laughs> Lucy's well, now going to the next room <laughs> when when she says that, what does that mean? She's talking about difficulties in your life, and you have to somehow do something with those difficulties to make this good thing happen. happen. But she said you don't have to do anything. But this is actually again s- some sort of thing you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to see the walls of Jericho come tumbling down, but nobody wants to be the one who has to walk around those walls. Can we just be done? In obedience hey, to... that's what I normally say. Yes. <laughs> uh, God, is... to trust him, to shout prior to seeing one brick fall. The emphasis is all on what we are supposed to do. Yeah, where's... There... You know what? God has totally got his hands tied Hang because on. he's depending on us to do the things. <clears throat> I'm getting them. I think we're going to be utilizing some props. Wait a minute. Here we go. I believe God's going to help me, but I just got to do this. Wait, wait. You're going to add more as she keeps talking? (laughs) I don't know if this is going to work. But wait a second. If I could just see the Red Sea. It's already been done. Wait a minute. Let me go on for another hour about all the stuff you haven't done yet. I didn't walk around Jericho. Jericho. And I don't see the bricks. Wait a minute. God's really disappointed in you. I can't handle it anymore. I'm not okay. that strong. Let's keep going. But that's what it's like. If there is a multitude, <sighs> that means there is a miracle. 
and you better do something to get the miracle. And if you don't, it's up to it's it's your fault. It's up to you to, to fix the problem. problem. Something's wrong with God's me. I'm defective. You. Yeah. Yeah. Been there, done that. So praise the multitude, or they ask for the multitude to, to go away, and Jesus, he doesn't go for that. So when he doesn't, they, he doesn't go for that, the disciples have another solution. This is us too. Send the multitude away, Jesus says, mm-mm. And they say, well, send us away then. But they didn't say that. No, they didn't. They said, send them. That doesn't matter. Like, she cares what the Bible says. So how many different... <clears throat> You know, books I, did you read? I read four. All four Gospels have the story. And they didn't say that. Versions. No. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. To the surrounding towns and villages so that we can go and buy more, accumulate more, get more, because as we are is not sufficient. Ugh. So send us somewhere else so we can what get What the heck? She just reads meaning into this that is not there. Wait a minute. Where's the Webster's Dictionary? <laughs> She's just pulling stuff out of thin air. This is atrocious. There's probably 60,000 people in this giant stadium. And they're all cheering and clapping. And they, they all probably this. paid to get probably, in there. Yeah, Tickets. If it's conferences. A, women's conferences are expensive. I looked it up and found out that this Love Your Life conference at Lakewood Church is a women's conference, and it's free. However, if you see Priscilla Schreier at her own events, they're about $85 per ticket. Better and be better suited to this multitude, because as we are is not enough. It has always been the tactic of the enemy to get us to think that we are not enough as we currently are. We but are. we aren't what enough we... because she talked about us not doing enough to go around yes. the walls of Jack- yes. Jericho and the walls and the Red Sea. I mean, she's taking every self-help motivational yeah. kind of theme and she's just cramming it <laughs> into the text. You're not doing enough, but wait a minute. God's giving us all everything yeah. we need. You're not doing it, but hey. One of her first jobs was working for Zig Ziglar, the, the motivational speaker guy's company. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, this is, wait this a is second. motivational speaking with a thin veneer of Christianity and Bible twisting. Motivational speaking is what it should be to motivate yeah. you to do your job. If you want to be a motivational speaker, it's don't, okay. don't stick God in there exactly. and twist the Bible. Don't, because now you've got a different gospel. A different gospel. Thank you, Galatians girl. Thank you. <laughs> So what she oh, should boy. be saying is, instead of going to town and doing the kind of responsible common sense thing to say either we should go to town or the people themselves should go to right. town and get their own food so right. they don't go hungry. That's the basic thing. The the one point you could make was that they could have said, hmm, we're, we're sitting here with God himself. Maybe we should seek his assistance mm-hmm. because he can do anything. Yeah, and, they weren't there in that but, life. But no, is, what is she pointing to? She's saying they should have recognized they already had everything within themselves. Oh. That they had, they were good enough. Why right. is she saying that? It's not in the text. <laughs> because she wants to tell everybody how good they are. That's what motivational speakers tend to do. They want to encourage you and make you feel better about yourself, which sometimes is okay. Sometimes people have a really tough time. They've been in a very negative okay. environment, and they need to be kind of encouraged. But that's what you don't do here. You don't take the Bible and twist the living daylights out of it so that you can make it say something that a motivational speaker might say. And so then that puts the burden on us again. Yeah. First, we identify... Oh, yeah, we would say that. Or they're just like us. We would turn around and go away. We don't want to face. But now who doesn't want to? You know, if you you got to face your Red Sea. You've got to face the walls of Jericho. You've got to do it. You know, so it's all up to you again. And, and I'm thinking about all these women, many of whom are from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I'm sure, but many have come from further away. Right. I know, I know. I got my giant Texas cities mixed up. This was in the Houston area, not Dallas. Big, big deal. You know, it's at the Lakewood Church and. You know, you got these big speakers. <clears throat> um, how many of these women have already done this before? And they've heard these speeches and nothing has changed in their lives. Very depressing. But they are dependent on this kind of speaking because what this does is it covers up the feelings of inferiority that they're dealing with and the doubt that they're dealing with because they've heard this before. Many of these and women. And it didn't work. And it didn't work. And their lives are still the same as and they always. Should maybe worse. Pursuing the Holy Spirit and scripture thinking, okay, what is wrong then? Opposed to going to another. And I'm not belittling anybody who does this I was a part of this as well you know and it reminds me of when we were in high school we go to the next camp meeting you know 
we were in school all year. We can't wait for, you know, Memorial Day weekend trip because then we can get close to God again. Hmm. You know, this whole pep up, you know, you and God, this intimate time. And, and that was good, but it's like, if that's all you're waiting for year after year, what is your life like? What is your walk like with God? And same with this. If, if you're looking for a women's conference to, right. again, ignite you and be a motivational speech... What are you learning except for what you should be doing and putting yourself up, basically preparing for failure again, but you don't mm -hmm. know it's failure again. And I'm guessing that these women are so pumped up. Oh, yeah. And they're so entertained, really, really entertained. This is entertainment. She's She's entertaining. Absolutely. If you don't think about the actual content of what she says, it's very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And you know what they're doing? They're, They're... putting on Facebook, I, I can't believe I just saw Priscilla Shire. She was so good. I'm so excited. This is going to be great. And they're just, you know, all peppy. And then real life sets in again. So what do they do? They got to go back to another one. They got to right. buy the DVDs or they got to go on YouTube. Of, you know, summer camp. I mean, our Christian upbringing, you know. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. But Boy, yeah, that, I remember that. Ones. I remember <clears throat> yeah. one of my friends in high school saying, man, what are we going to do once we're out of high school? Yeah. I don't know what, you know, I need summer camp. <laughs> you know, and in high school, it's like, yeah, me too. But you realize, you know... You know, and to be fair to those summer camp environments that we were part of, they weren't making money trying to... No, they weren't. You know, it was just really... It was all very much... Christian leaders trying to help kids. Yep. And and, and really um, giving and pouring their heart and soul out and sharing their life with us. And and in nothing but positive. So please, I'm glad you pointed that out. But the point is, is then you start making people dependent on things like that. So then when you have women's conferences like this, it, oh, yeah. it, it kind it's, of instigates. It's 10 times worse. But but it, it triggers you to think, oh, yeah, I could use. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember doing that yeah. when the kids were little. It's like, oh, good, a women's conference like I did in high I'm, school. Well, there's probably some good women's conferences, a few. I don't, I don't know. know. I haven't been to one no. that's good. <laughs> don't go to this one. No. Experience. That means that as you currently are with the entrusted treasure, the power, the authority that he has given to you, you've got everything you need if you just pull out what he already has entrusted to you. This is absolute nonsense. This is meaningless. This is gibberish. I'm so mad at this woman. I've said enough. Yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. In fact, in Mark chapter 6, our layer of chocolate cake, we find out that he says to the disciples, Well, what do you have? He asks them that question. He says, What do you have? And then he doesn't even give them a chance to, to answer. He just immediately responds and says, Go and look. Mark 6. He said it. We have to read it. Mark 6. <clears throat> I've actually got a little slip of paper in here as a... A veritable bookmark, as it were. (laughs) The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a remote place and rest for a while. For many people were coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. I don't know if I read this version. Keep going. So they went away in the boat by themselves to a remote place, but many saw them leaving and recognized them. They ran on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. See my hand motion? That was the people arriving. It's very good. When, when, he, when he went to shore, he saw a large crowd and had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Hmm. She doesn't mention that. This is all about getting stuff, you know, and, and being great. And right there is God's heart for the people. Mm-hmm. And we skip over that for you. Yep. To what, what, what do you need? What do you want? Then he began to teach them many things, which is a, another point that is worth mentioning over and over again to be a christian means to be taught things not to get them imparted in a spiritual way there is a spiritual aspect to it for sure but words have to mean things and they have to be true and jesus did that he taught them many things this is this is what we see the apostles doing the book of acts everybody talks about the book of acts we got to be like the book of acts you know we got to do stuff we got to have miracles we got to signs and wonders live the way we're supposed to live you know what there's a whole bunch of is People sitting down and being taught. The apostles taught. Anyway, Which means uh, what? Doctrine. There you go. <laughs> yes. Doctrine is just teachings about God. Right. And it has to be true teachings. It has yes. to be correct teachings. So, um, okay, so this is the po- point where she was making her point. Uh, you give them something to eat, he responded. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, i got to go, go back. Mm-hmm. And it grew late. His disciples approached him and said, this place is deserted. 
and it is already late. Send them away so that they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages to buy themselves something to eat. So in this passage, they're not saying, let us go do it. They're saying, they're saying just send the people home. Them. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be hungry. Let and them know late. they need to get going. Right. He says this very brief thing. You give them something to eat. <clears throat> they said to him, should we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? So now they're saying, what, what do you mean? We should, we should do it. That's going to mm-hmm. cost a fortune. Right. That's a legitimate question, Absolutely. especially if you're not keeping in mind the fact that you're sitting there with the Son of God, who can do <laughs> yeah. anything. You know, they were living... You're in the middle of history and you don't know it. Yes. He asked them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. Yeah. Go find them. Is that the part where she just said that yes. he told them? So what is she turning that into? Uh, back it up a little bit. She is such a scripture twister. And I hope you, the viewer, are offended I really want you to be offended by this. I don't want you to be personally offended at her as a person. I don't want you to hate her as a person. I don't know her. I don't hate her. But I'm very offended by the way she's twisting the word of God. And all Christians should feel that way. And then he doesn't even give him a chance to to answer. He just immediately responds and says, go and look. That's a point that doesn't exist Mm -hmm. in the text. He says, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. He said, go and look. No, well, he's, he's not saying, how many loaves do you have? I'll wait for your answer. Never mind. I don't want to wait for your answer. I changed my mind. Just go and see. Mm-hmm. It's the same thought. Mm-hmm. It's the same thought. Hey, how many loaves do you have? Go and look. Right. Go and see. Right. She's turning that into a... a, a go and look. Well... Kind of like sassy. No, no, no. That's how I read it. That's, that's probably, probably true as well. But I and think she's what she's going to turn it into is... Sassin. You've got to look into yourself to see what those okay. dream destiny things she's are. She's still saying it very sassy. Go and look. See? Yeah, okay, okay. He said it like that. Go and... And she's lying about Jesus. Exactly! No big deal because... Go and look. She doesn't care. She does not care. This is the point. You have to see this. This woman does not care about lying about Jesus because she is a professional storyteller. She's a professional speech maker. And she probably believes in completely what she's talking about. It doesn't matter. If she believes it or not, she's doing this because she intends to. This is no accident. Right, She's right. a professional. It's, it's very intentional. It's carefully scripted and she's got this worked out. You don't go to a church this big at a conference this big and just wing it. <laughs> right. She's given the speech many times before. Every word coming out of her mouth is her fault. She's responsible. These are not slip-ups. Look. Sassy. He said it like you would tell your kid. If the month, I mean, the week after Christmas, they came to you and said, Mom, I'm bored. (laughs) She's relating to women again. Exactly. I'm seeing it through your eyes a little bit. Thank you. Oh, Lucy. Hang on. She fell off the nut bell. Lucy will be returning in just a moment. Come here. I'm encouraging. She tried jumping up there and she fell off. Well, we got all those blankets on that. Well, it's because of... Okay, let, let's see what she does with this. Okay. You would say, Come well, on. what do you have? And then before you gave them a chance to respond, because you could already tell that the response they was going to give you was going to get them in trouble. So you didn't even give them a chance. You just say, you would say to them, go and because if you'll just look, you'll see. Note the dramatic. Mm-hmm. She lowers the voice, and now she's going to try to make a serious point. This is all stagecraft. If you take these words and you wrote them down with no emotion, this is idiocy. You know what it reminds me of? When you watch a An show. Idiot? When you sh- When you watch a show and it's like they're creeping along yes. and it's quiet, and if there was no music, it would not be scary. But you put that music yeah. in and yeah. it's like, whoa. That the thing you're complaining about is something you already have access to. If you will go and look, Moses, you will see that everything you need to do what I've called you to do, it's in your hand. It's that rock. Again, they didn't have anything in themselves in their own hand. They, no. had, they didn't have enough. It was, the, it was Jesus that multiplied what they had. He prayed over it. And he multiplied it. And he multiplied it. it. Right. They, they didn't. They just brought to so him instead what he of, asked. So instead of emphasizing Jesus, the creator of the entire universe yes. coming to, to earth in the form of man and doing yet another miracle, she ignores that and points to us and how we already have the ability to do all this stuff. Five and two. 
Five and two. Five and two. Rod, that common rod that has always been right beside you, but now I'm gonna infuse it with my power. If I can. So take that thing you've already had and start using it. This is about works. This is about doing more. This has nothing to do with Christianity. Just get you to go and look, Moses. Pick the stick up. Put it over the Red Sea. You will see that it will make. What's the Red Sea in your life, honey? It's it's their puppy right now. She keeps hiding her <laughs> oh. head. Hi, Luce. It's okay. I hope she gets it's beyond okay. this. <laughs> I think I'm just so aggravated. She hears my tone of voice. Yeah, she hides. It's okay, Daddy. Daddy, 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 Daddy. <laughs> there you go. La, 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 la. We'll just feed la, her la, more. La. Yeah. There's it's Papa. Okay. It's a happy day. La, 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 la. I could have been a kindergarten uh, instructor, I think. Yeah. Or a dog I, instructor. Yeah, are you feeling better now? It's okay. Yeah, it'll be over with soon. <laughs> we think. The Red Sea divide like a solid wall. Go and look, David. Yes, Goliath is right there. But if you'll go look down by the stream, I've already provided five smooth stones that will be everything you need to take that giant down. Go and look. Spend all of the energy that you're spending complaining. Spend that energy going to look for what God has already given us. At. So she started out by talking about the people being oppressed by the crowds. I can't hear the, you. The, what? The, the, yeah, no. <laughs> I wonder if this woman actually knows she has a microphone. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't help it. Um, the disciples were oppressed by the crowds, which isn't actually what the text says exactly. They were just concerned that these people needed to go home and eat. <clears throat> but she turns that into, you've got things oppressing you. You know. Uh, what does oppression mean? Well, things that are hard in your life, difficulties. And then she turns it into, but you've got this dream destiny thingy. That's the answer. Or, you oh, no, already have wait, it. Before she says that, she says the um, this this crowd that's pushing on you is actually a proof that your drawer is about to get opened. <laughs> I still, well, is it my drawer or my cabinet? Your cabinet. <laughs> I don't know. As long as it's not your drawers maybe, are about to get opened. May, maybe it's that the rug. would be inappropriate, boys and girls. <laughs> maybe it's the rug I'm gonna trip on. Yeah. Uh, this is just. I gotta keep going. That's true. <laughs> okay. It's okay, Lucy. So they pulled it out. Five and two. All right, Jesus, you gonna do something with this? They say, okay. Here you go. And they put it in his hands. Again, she's she's gonna turn this into you just gotta put it in his hands they did was get what they found and gave it to Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the one that blessed it. Yes. Jesus is the one that multiplied it. Jesus is the one that did the oh, miracle. Oh, but he couldn't have done the miracle if Without. they hadn't handed it over to him. Oh, boy. What's what the think? loaf and fish in your life that you need to hand over to the Lord so I'm he can multiply sure. it? There she goes. This is the longest 12 minutes of Wait my up. life. Yeah, mine too. Everything Wait changes. Down. When you do more. When you put your five and two in the yep. hands of Jesus. What if I only have four and one? What if why, I are, why are you clapping? You stop speaking negatively about it and just trust it into the hands of Jesus. When you just take that look. So if the disciples were speaking negatively, which they might have, we don't know. You know, they were all there. And they weren't necessarily trusting. They just gave Jesus yes. what he asked for. What if, what if one of the disciples said, I don't know what this is going to do. We're reading a lot do you into think, this context. Do you think Jesus would have been, oh, I was just about to multiply this, but you just spoke negatively and now I can't I, do anything. I'm, yeah. I'm the told... negative speaking just turned off the power of God. I'm done. But that's that's what she's clearly implying right. here. That you're stopping the power of God by your negative okay. speaking. Okay. And, and let me just point this out too, because I appreciate everybody's comments and people who agree and don't agree. It's very well received. Really, it is. And I just want to point out that if you're commenting on how negative we are or picking out someone and it's a Christian and you're not supposed to judge, you need to get back into your scripture and you need to see what God demands of us as followers of Christ and what we need to be looking for and how important it is to what we, what we allow in our life. I mean, how important is what we allow in our life to what we believe is going to be the the guiding words to that we say that's that we claim is from God. I mean that's 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 nothing to be um, uh, very flippant about. Yes. That's nothing to be very unity about. <clears throat> uh, no. I mean here's the here's the article that I oh, think I referenced before, full of Bible and, verses 
that you are ignoring if you take that position of, why are you being so negative about this woman? She's trying her best. She I mean, means look, well. And, and she's a Christian. Well, what did the Apostle Paul do in Galatians again? He actually called out Peter because Peter was with the Judaizers who were, and he was agreeing with them saying, well, these Gentiles can't be Christians unless they're circumcised. Believing in Jesus is okay, but we've got to do more. What book was that in? Galatians. Oh. Oh. So, so here's Paul calling out Peter. <coughs> Did Peter know Jesus? Yes. Did he love Jesus? Yes. Was he a Christian? Yes. But he was condemning Peter mm -hmm. for what he was doing. I'm sorry. I'm not Paul. Right. We're but, not saying we are, but no. But, but there is a place when somebody's teaching is wrong, they have to be corrected. And it leads that, people down a very gloomy, right. possibly away from Jesus path. Here's the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 5, 11 through 13. Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those on the outside. Remove the evil person from among you. James 3, 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. So she is a Christian teacher who needs to be judged more strictly. This is Jesus being so sweet and nice. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Talking to the Pharisees. Why did he talk so harshly to them? Because they were speaking on behalf of God and they were doing it wrong. They were, they were actually hurting people by their wrong teaching. And they knew all about God because they studied the Torah. Right? I mean, right. they're supposed to know and be the ones that people put their spiritual lives in and they believed and they followed their instruction. I, so that was pretty heavy. I, I want you guys to see that this is an extensive article that I did. And it's all about how unbelievably obvious it is in the New Testament that you are to be really, really careful about doctrine. And within the context of any kind of Christian teaching, especially in a church, this is a conference, so... Mm, but I, she's still teaching. Yeah, she's still she's teaching. She's still teaching and really Christian important teaching. things. Tens of thousands of women. Yes. And, and I'm sorry, but I don't think only women go. These are... These <laughs> I'm are, sure there are men listening Well, and it's on too. YouTube now. Right. now. So even if there were only women in the room, men can listen. <clears throat> These are all the verses that you have to ignore if you think we're being too mean and we should just be nice to everybody because... Unity. Yeah, because of unity. So where can they find this again? This is on the Messed Up Church. I'll put the link in the description Perfect. of this video. Okay. But this is a... Was that her moving her yes. bowl? Yeah. She's pushing her food bowl. And now she's looking at us because she wants more food. So the name of this article is A Biblical Guide to Not Calling Out False Teachers. Good. Thank you. And, I, and I'm not pushing this because it's my article. It's really mostly just a bunch of Bible verses. <laughs> yeah. And I just and you want found to, them. Yeah. I, I not was, pulled them out of context. I compiled these over a course of years because I kept seeing these over and yeah. over again. In fact, one of the things I did in here is I took screenshots or, or, or I should say just photos. And these are from some of my various translations of the Bible. And I just wanted it for, for people to see even just the way they put the... Um, what do you call that? A subtitle? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Confronting apostasy, destruction for false teachers, guard against false preaching, uh, beware of antichrist, let no man deceive you, reprove false teachers, judgment on false teachers, Paul's warnings of false teachers, false teachers and the love of money, beware of strange doctrines, <laughs> be sure the spirits are of God. That's from the, uh, the little epistle of John, uh, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world, confronting apostasy. So you get the idea. Even just looking at the, the subtitles, not even the verses themselves, the, the topic just keeps coming up. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. But let's go back to her. We'll never get this thing done. I know. A little dream that he has entrusted to you and you give it back to him and you say, no, look like much right now but i'm putting it in your hands and the great thing about our god verse 16 so where in the bible are we given any evidence that these uh, fish and loaves represent our dreams number one are we even supposed to have dreams well no that's not in the bible either <laughs> right not this kind of a dream right this this is a very specific this is teaching what we're talking about which is where god has planted something in your heart and you're going right. to do something great with your life once you just give that dream over to god and really pursue it and then it'll all happen yeah and in fact what usually happens is you ruin your life because and you try ridiculous things yes, and you take risks and you lose money and 
embarrass yourself and sometimes right. really, really hurt the people around you. And sometimes lose your families, <clears throat> yes. as we have read in yes. some of your comments. People lose marriages. They, they, they have broken relationships with right. their children. All because they were taught this very thing. Right. <clears throat> but again, where in the Bible are we told that these five loaves and two fishes right. represent our dreams? And if we just hand over those five loaves and two fishes in the form of dreams, then our dreams will come true. This is a non-Christian teaching. This is that he took the meager gifts of man. He didn't look at their little bit and say, come back when you've got more. Uh uh-uh. A holy, divine, almighty, powerful God. A God who does not need us or our loaves and fish. When man gave it to him, he received it. And looking up to heaven, he blessed. Y'all, you don't need more. You just... You know, I, I just want to mention... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The dog. She's wagging her tail. She, she wants like, some food. She's been... You know what? Go get her... Rough. Go give her... Uh, get a milk bone and have her sit with you. Okay. <laughs> That'll be entertainment. Since people are probably sick of hey, hearing I'm... me at this point. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, so a lot of you heard me say that for years I played the guitar and stuff in the praise band. We went to a pretty big church. Nothing like this. But, you know, 1,200 people in the room when it's full... And I remember having a conference where a lot of people came from out of town, and the church was full, and I was right there on stage, right in the front, playing the guitar, the electric guitar, the cool guitar. And this feeling that she has right here, I can only have just a a small glimpse of, because I wasn't the main thing. I was just in the band playing the electric guitar, which is a little bit cooler than the other instruments, (laughs) even though I actually played that bass and drums, and I like those just as much. The drummer, right. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, I know what this feels like just a little bit. And it is a drug. She is getting a buzz right now. And she is working the crowd as good as anybody can work the crowd. Wow. This is what musicians do when they're playing and they're doing their thing and the crowd is responding and they have this emotional connection. This is what a good speaker does. And it's not what a pastor should ever be doing. Even though she's not a pastor. Yeah. She's, but she's teaching she's the word teaching of God. She's teaching as a pastor. Right. People treat her like a pastor. Nobody cares. They should, but they don't. <clears throat> and there's Lucy with a little treat. I already gave her some. We need to get sponsored by the Milk Bone Company. <laughs> we do. Look at this. Oh, yeah. She loves those. So somebody gave a recipe. Yes, and I'm going to cook them. She's going to cook them. I am. You know, we used to have a dog. You know what? Next week, we'll see what those treats look like. All right. I'll, I'll show them She to used you. to make them. I did. I'm we teasing to... you because you have a job now, and I'm, I really shouldn't lots of jobs but anyway yes we used to have a dog that hi you happy now that um why is it so fun to watch a dog eat i never get tired any animal you go to the zoo oh look they're eating we don't do that with each other though (laughs) close your mouth when you're eating please oops can i keep going now or are we gonna say something else no i'm good god's blessing on what you've already got you don't need more you just need god's blessing on your five and two do we have to listen to this whole thing you know what his yeah, blessing is? It's his favor. We should. It's his favor. We should. No, favor is what makes the scales balance over in your favor. Too bad favor Paul didn't know about that. It's a little bit unfair on your behalf. Too bad Peter didn't know about that before make, he got crucified yeah. upside down. Yeah, it makes things a little bit unfair on your behalf. What is that appealing to? I, we already said this. This was in the beginning. I don't want to. Favor is what opens doors that nobody can shut. You know what? If you're trying to get a job and you're trying to uh, make your life better, there's nothing wrong with praying to God and saying, God, Absolutely. if it's your will, Done please open doors times. for me. Please Absolutely. help me to get a better job. Please help me to do a really good job. Please help me to do my best and f- to, to make it so that my boss recognizes the job I'm doing, if it's a good job, so that I can be promoted. There's nothing wrong with that sort of a prayer. But this is this unfair advantage that God's going to yeah. give you if you just kind of do the right thing. You have the magic formula. Yeah. And there is no magic formula, no. obviously. And she hasn't even clearly defined what no. that is. It's just a bunch of gibberish. It's just a bunch of motivational stuff stitched together with Bible twisting. you in positions that nobody can take away. Favor is what sets you before kings and queens. The favor of God is what you want on your life. This is the Stephen Furtick move and they all do this they're gonna <laughs> probably get on their feet if she keeps going no Lucy come on just and these go. these speakers know they have a clock there and they know they only do, you only do that when you're getting near the end you know you gotta there she goes <laughs> I'm sorry you gotta make the most of your whatever she's got 45 minutes so I don't know where this fell in the overall speech on your five and two looking up to heaven he blessed it and he broke it and he kept giving it okay to the de- these women are up 
doing this. Who are they praising? Hmm. Disciples. Why are they clapping? She's a good pantomimist. And going, and it kept going, and the 12 didn't understand how the little bit they had, ha they had in the beginning had become so much. And their entire multitude, the whole burden was satisfied. And when everybody was satisfied, Ooh, somebody say satisfied. I have never been this frustrated, I don't think. And I've been really frustrated before. Yeah. Now can. she's going she's gonna to take the word satisfied, which isn't in every passage. Um, everyone ate and was satisfied. That's from Mark. That's it. What does that mean? Does that mean that they were like, ooh, that's the best food I've ever had? Doesn't say that. Um, here's from John. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. When they had eaten their fill. <laughs> this could have been actually very average, unflavorful food. That's my <laughs> guess. I don't think this was what she's about to describe. But she's using it as a metaphor with how good stuff is going to get in your life. You're going to have all this good mm -hmm. stuff. Victoria, I wish we had time tonight, girl. Satisfied. This is not some, you know, happy meal sort of situation here. Mm -mm. This is not a number one on the Burger King drive through This is Sunday afternoon. I'm talking about old school Sunday, where your mom started to cook on Saturday night and the yeast rolls were rising. So she's making all this emphasis on all the stuff you're going to get when you surrender it correctly to God, your dream destiny or whatever it is, and you won't have the crowds, the multitudes pressing you anymore. And it's going to be really And the good. kind of food you're going to have is from something that your mom started on Saturday, yeah. the old type of yeah. Sunday dinner. <clears throat> what is she directing your attention towards? Christ and him crucified for no, your sins? our stomach and, and yeah. our flesh. Your and flesh. what we want to eat. And God's all about feeding your flesh. Right. And that's what this story is supposed to illustrate, according to Priscilla Shire. And the macaroni and cheese was bubbling in the sweet potatoes. I have to say, this crowd looks like they've had a little bit too much macaroni <laughs> and cheese. Let's just be honest. They're all gooey on the stove and, and every, the sweet tea was going the roast. You know, she started the roast on 200 the night before and let it simmer all night long. She could be talking about Christ right now. Right. But she's talking about food. She's working the crowd. This is a professional and speaker. hungry, aren't you? I know. Listen, do you remember how when you came home from church the next day, you ate that and the only thing you could do after that was... That's all you can do. That's why Jesus said, go ahead and have the people recline. Have them get in a posture of expectation. But I'm getting ready to do exceedingly, and abundantly, abundantly above, above all. and beyond. <coughs> he does not say that in the scripture verse nope. that she is talking about. Not at all. And they reclined because <coughs> that's the way they ate. They didn't head and invented the table yet. Right. Hello. Wow, this is Keep going. Jesus. We're almost done. Yeah. You know Almost what? done. Look at 10 minutes, 23 we, seconds. We should have had snacks for this. We deserve snacks for this. <sighs> we got candy bars downstairs. You want to? You, wanna... you have candy bars downstairs? Yeah. They're still in that secret drawer that nobody knows about. We have to hide them. You want to go get them? <laughs> I'll take this part out. Okay. Now we're talking. <sighs> okay. okay. I'm happy now. I got to open this up though first. Chocolate. This is chocolate with I don't think you salted caramel. Milk stuff. Okay, I love milk chocolate. You know, we should dark chocolate. We should have told them before the, the, or the beginning you know so what? they had time to get their own chocolate. You know what? You can actually make a public service announcement. Don't make it too crunchy by the way. You mic. could have it, um, you know, public in the beginning. Uh-huh. Okay. Warning. Now, now we can tolerate this. Okay. Ask for faith. Satisfied. Sunday afternoon. Kind of satisfied. That's what it is. And they were so satisfied. Y'all, don't even sit down. Just get standing. Listen. They were so satisfied. This is how you know how good the meal was. 
there was leftovers. They started going around, picking up the leftovers, y'all, and guess what? There were 12 baskets full. One basket. I'm just you, saying that if if, they're good, if the meal's that great, you don't have leftovers. Right. I mean, that's very minor. I'm just pointing that out. <clears throat> the, the point that that's supposed to show is that God had no problem meeting the needs. Right. Miraculously. Who supernaturally. Mm-hmm. Proving once again that he was God. The son of God. Incarnate. Mm-hmm. She's turning it into evidence that the food was really, really, really good. Appealing to their flesh. Stomach. Their stomach. Mm-hmm. This is one of the most carnal messages. Mm-hmm. That's why we're eating this, right? For each disciple to take home as an overflow of the grace and the blessing of God. I want to pray for any of you who are in this room and you've got a multitude weighing on you. You got I mean, that thing is burdening you down. And you've never considered the fact that you've already got what you need. That is so meaningless. I'm still dumbfounded by how this is like um, a balloon. It looks like a big round thing. Mm-hmm. But if you pop it, mm-hmm. it just goes away. There's nothing there. <laughs> That's what this is. There's nothing there. I mean, listen to what she said again. Do I have to? You have to. <laughs> Down and you've never considered the fact that you've already got what you need. you been thinking this is not enough gifting, this is not enough talent, it's not... Enough gifting, enough talent. So she's pointing to yourself as the answer to your problems. Correct. I, l- let's and imagine... you're not believing God. So, yes, you have it, but your problem still... Is that you haven't somehow connected with God enough so that he'll make right. the thing And believe bloom. enough. Believe enough. That that's what you have, and it's imagine, up to you. Imagine a woman in this audience, and I'm sure there are some, who have a terrible husband at home and they're about to be divorced. Or somebody who's getting beat at home. Yes, and right. and they're and they're trying to think domestic how, violence. How can I how can I protect my children? I don't have enough money on right. my own. I mean, these are real problems. Real problems that are very common, unfortunately. And she's not giving them any answers at all. She's actually hurting False them hope. more. She's hurting them more. Right. Because she's saying nothing. I don't have money. It's not enough time. I don't have enough. And Jesus is whispering in your ear tonight. No, he's not. You got enough. Just give it to me. I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to blow your mind. With what I'm going to do if you just trust it to me. And that's the end of the clip. And then hey, they do a come promo here, Lucy. For come on. I, he- I heard her starting to try to eat some more food, which she doesn't have in her bowl. Oh. But she needs to howl. She was almost starting to before. <coughs> okay. Come here, sweetie. Well, we don't have our timer on, so I think this is a really long video. I'm so okay. glad if you're still watching. Of course you're still watching. I- I'm talking to you. Thank you so much. I want to remind you to please check out the playlist that I have on this channel and the other recommended channels, Chris Roseborough. There's a bunch of other ones. Uh, I should say Fighting for the Faith is the name of his channel. Please look at all the content that's there. We can't help you with all your questions, but we want to, and there's a lot of answers there for you. So let's um, let's see what the heresy hound thinks of this. Oh, boy, here we go. A heretic. There were twelve. One basket. To take home. The verdict is in, people. The Harris. Yes. Oh, so bad. Okay. The heresy. <laughs> the heresy hound has spoken. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Hey, we thank hope you found you, this helpful. And thank you so much for your comments. Thanks for watching. Thanks All that for stuff. sharing. Hey, subscribe. We never tell people to subscribe. I always think it's dumb, but we just had somebody stop by today who it loves was our great. channel. And she said, I've never subscribed. I'm like, oh, well, I guess. Hi, Maggie. Thanks yeah. for coming by today. Subscribe to our channel because it'll make your life so much better. <laughs> and thank you for all of your encouraging words yep. and your donations. We appreciate yep. it, you guys. See God you bless soon. you. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you.